The intent of this video is to fact check the History Channel's description of the March 9, 1945 Tokyo Firebomb Raid as described on the website's This Day in History tab. The History Channel's 2023 website touts, the History Channel serves as the most tr trustworthy source of information, entertainment, and media. I've been creating content outlining the World War II firebombing campaign against Japan. Part of my research step is to review sources for sanity checks with regard to the channel's video factoids. The History History Channel's website describes the March 9, 1945 Tokyo firebombing as shown on this page. There were many face-palming moments as I scanned the text. I found 11 questionable claims in reviewing the article. Some of the errors were minor, some were major. The shaded section indicates the History Channel's article was written by and or edited by four of the History.com's personnel. Let's review each of the claims in question and review my channel's refuting justification evidence. Claim number one, the bombers dropped 2,000 tons of incendiaries on Tokyo. This chart rolls up the six Tokyo incendiary attacks from a declassified 1947 United States Strategic Survey report titled, A Report on Physical Damage in Japan. The March 9, 1945 Tokyo firebomb raid is represented by this row. The total weight of incendiaries in tons is listed in this column. The weight of incendiaries dropped on Tokyo equates to 1,667 tons, not 2,000 tons. Claim number two, the firebomb raid lasted for 48 hours. The Tokyo firebomb raid from first to last bomb lasted two hours and 53 minutes, as shown circled here. The next Tokyo firebomb mission occurred on April 13th, about five weeks later, as shaded in this row. The bombing raid lasted two hours and 53 minutes, not 48 hours. Claim number three, the crews from the islands of Tinian and Saipan were briefed. This is more of an omission as there were three wings that participated in the raid, the 73rd from Saipan, the 313th from Tinian, and the 314th from Guam, as shown on this 1945 21st Bomber Command document titled Graphical Summary of Operations. They missed the Guam B-29 Bomber Pathfinder and Strike Force. The crews from the islands of Saipan, Tinian, and Guam were briefed, not just Saipan and Tinian. Claim number four, all guns were removed except for the tail turret. No ammo or guns were carried, as highlighted on this line in the Flight Engineering Planning section of the 1945 21st Bomber Command Tactical Mission Report. Although some units snuck ammo and guns aboard, most planes did not. This position is also backed up by the 497th Wing Consolidated Mission Report highlighted row. The tail guns were loaded on the next Nagoya urban firebombing mission, as discussed on this 1945 21st Bomber Command document titled, Analysis of Incendiary Phases of Operation, March 9th through 19th, 1945. The rationale was that if the Japanese knew the bombers were unarmed, they would likely press home attacks, and it also allowed the gunners to shoot out searchlights. All guns and ammo were removed during the March 9th Tokyo mission, even the tail turret guns and ammo. Claim number five, the guns were removed to decrease weight and increase speed. Although there would be some weight reduction, the guns were removed because Bomber Command worried the gunners would inadvertently shoot other bombers during the low visibility nighttime conditions. This is why no guns and ammo were carried on the Tokyo mission. The report goes on to state that during the Tokyo mission, no ammo was carried. The guns were removed to eliminate friendly fire, not to reduce weight and increase speed. Claim number six, the ammo removal increased the bomb load by 65%. This graph compares the bomb weight of the previous missions with the bomb weight of the March 9th Tokyo mission for the three wings deployed. The bomb weight increased by 120%, not 65%. The bomb's weight increase was due to the planes flying at lower altitudes, as discussed in this 1953 United States Historical Studies document titled Development of Night Operations, 1941-1952. through 1952. The large Large quantities of fuel consumed by the climb segment can be swapped for bombs. The bomb load increased by 120%, not 65%, and this was due to flying at low altitude, not ammo removal. Claim number seven, the bombers took off at 5.34 p.m. from Saipan and Tinian. This map shows the route of the three wings to and from Tokyo from the tactical mission report. The map includes a table listing the times of takeoff and time over target. The times listed are military, from time zone zebra, so they will need to be converted to local Marianas time zone. The 314th wing planes took off earlier since Guam is farther away from Tokyo. 
We can make a chart rolling up the times of takeoff and time over target for each of the three wings. Both the 73rd and 313th wings took off from Saipan and Tinian respectively at 6.15 p.m. The 314th wing took off from Guam earlier at 5.35 p.m. The bombers took off at 5.35 p.m. from Guam, not 5.34 p.m. from Saipan and Tinian. Also, the bombers from Saipan and Tinian took off at 6.15 p.m., not 5.34 p.m. Claim number 8. The bombers from Saipan and Tinian reached Tokyo at 12.15 a.m. on March 10th. This is another omission. As seen in the tabular data roll-up, the first bomb from Guam's 314th Wings Pathfinder struck at 12.07 a.m. on March 10th, Tokyo time. The first bomb struck at 12.07 a.m., not 12.15 a.m. Claim number 9. 334 B-29s dropped their bombs on Tokyo. This column rolls up the aircraft airborne at 325, and of these, only 279 actually bombed Tokyo. 279 B-29s bombed Tokyo, not the 334 claimed. Claim number 10. The bombers attacked at an altitude of 500 feet. This chart shows the assigned altitude bands for the March 9th, Tokyo firebomb mission and the following four firebomb missions. The altitude of attack varied from 5,000 to 7,700 feet, not 500 feet as claimed. There are lots of reasons why this low altitude is not feasible or practical. Claim number 11. The Tokyo winds were at 30 knots. This map identifies the four Tokyo incendiary aiming points, the wing's axis of attack, and the wind speed and direction. The wind speed equated to 40 knots, not 30 knots. Brandolini's law states it will take an order of magnitude of effort to refute a false claim than it took to produce it. I would agree with this premise. Do you agree with the channel's refuting justification for each of the claims? If you've enjoyed this evaluation, please consider engaging by commenting or liking the video.